Corinthians in the fourth chapter, Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter. So good to see you here today. Amen. Good looking congregation. Amen. Look at the one next to you and tell him that uh, he's talking about me right now. Good looking thing. All right. We're all beautiful, right? Made in the image of God, the likeness of God. We're blessed and highly favored and good looking too. Amen. We're talking about this morning is being activated. How many has ever got a credit card in the mail? You take it out of the envelope and you carry it to the store and you try to use it. It doesn't work, does it? Why? Not been activated, right? And that's the way it is with the callings of God and the, us doing a work for God. Until we get it activated, it's no good. Can't use it. But boy, once we activate that thing, oh, we can swipe that card in, right? We can be used by God. That's what we're talking about this morning. He said in verse number six, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure. Now I know the scriptures preceding this, he's talking about the gospel of Jesus Christ and we have the gospel in us. But this morning I wanna also look at this that we have a treasure called our calling that is in us. We have this treasure called a calling or the seed that he put in us in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Matthew 13 and 44, he said again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to treasure hid in a field, the which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth the field, amen. It's like when we get activated or we get saved, that's when we get activated that we found this treasure and we say to the world, I don't need you anymore. I don't want you anymore. Gets rid of all you have because I found the treasure, amen? Hallelujah, let us pray. Father, we thank you this morning for who you are most of all. We thank you, Father, for an opportunity to serve you, opportunity to be here to hear the word today. Father, anoint our ears to receive the word which is already anointed. And Father, we just thank you for the anointing to deliver this anointed word. And Father, that all the glory will go to you, for you deserve it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Look at the one next to you and says, you need to find your treasure. Amen. Preached a message one time, and I'm gonna to touch on it again probably a couple of times in the message here this morning. But I talked about the most valuable property on planet Earth is the cemetery. It's the people who have never activated their calling. They had a treasure of wealth that God had placed in them but never activated it and they died without activating it. And this laying there. It says that in every one God placed a seed called a calling or a purpose. Look at the one next to you and said, you've got a purpose on this earth. If you'll activate it, that that God has placed in you, you can do great and mighty things for God, amen? We all come to a place in our life that our seed or our calling must be activated or regenerated. When a farmer takes a seed that lays up there and it can lay there for hundreds of years. They found some seed, some wheat seed in the pyramids uh, that had been in there for a thousand years. And they took them seed and they put it in the ground and they was regenerated, activated, and they begin to grow. Amen. That seed that's in us, when we get saved, God activates our calling. I mean, the day I got saved, I didn't the next day go and be a pastor of a church. But that seed was activated and it started growing and maturing, amen. 
and developing into what God would want for me. And it's the same story in your lives too, the same way. Amen. It's called regeneration or come to life. Over in 1 Samuel in the 16th chapter in verse number one, it says, and the Lord said unto Samuel, how long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thine horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. One of his sons has a seed in him, a calling to be king. Amen. God had already placed it there when David was in his mother's womb. Amen. We understand that. In verse five it says, and he said, peaceably I am come to sacrifice. He's telling this to Jesse. Unto the Lord, sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. He called them to the sacrifice. Now, I want to tell you a brief little story here that kind of makes us better understand why David wasn't in the house that day. Now, I have no way of proving it. It's just kind of a, a rumor through time and it's come down that, that at one point in Jesse's life, uh, uh, after, before the birth of David or before he was even thought of, his mom, his wife wasn't pregnant with David or nothing like that. It was in between. And so Jesse had come to a place in his life that he thought because he was the grandson of Ruth, who was a Moabite, a Gentile, that he was impure or it was kind of messing with the purity of the bloodline. So he ceased to have children with his wife. No relationships. And he was going to have other children from a um, Canaanite uh, servant. More children. Only, uh, I've got her name down here. It's not the Bible. It uh, starts with the N. I can't find it right now. But Nitzavit. Uh, and she conspired with the servant that that night when they would go to bed that she would take the servant's place in the dark and Jesse would lay with her. And it came about that she did that uh, and Jesse was with his wife there and she conceived. Only it was kept secret the next day, didn't know who it was, I guess. I don't understand that one, but, but nevertheless, <laughs> amen. Amen. <laughs> Is the way the story goes. <laughs> but in the process of time, she started getting bigger. And it came to be known that she was pregnant. And to those around, got kind of tagged her as immoral of what she'd done. And so for that, David, when he was born, was kind of like to all the other brothers, an outcast. He was kind of like, and I can understand why when the days when Samuel had come over that Jesse called all of his sons in for this sacrifice, only David was left down in the field with the sheep because he was kind of like a second class person. Amen. I'm glad that God doesn't look at us that way. <clears throat> when the world sees us as a, a jagged, ugly rock, God looks inside and sees a beautiful statue in there somewhere, amen? He begins to chip away the things that shouldn't be in our life and all of a sudden there appears this statue that was in that big old rock all the time, amen? <clears throat> I guess that's why David said in Psalm 69, 8, I am become a stranger unto my brethren and an alien unto my mother's children. He also said in Psalms 51 and 5, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Back in Samuel in the 16th chapter again, verse number 5, he said, Samuel said to Jesse, Peaceably I have come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified 
Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass uh, when they were come that he looked uh, on Eliab. He was the oldest and he was big and it reminded him of Saul because he was big of statue, big man. And it reminded him of Saul. And he said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his statutes because uh, I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. Uh, see, man looks at the outside. That's why we look on the world out there and we see somebody's on drugs and we say, man, there are nobody. Let me tell you, uh, there's a soul in them somewhere. Uh, and it's our job to cultivate that soul out of them. Hallelujah to take and chisel away the rough rocks, uh, the jaggedness uh, and the sharp things that makes that rock look ugly uh, until uh, all of a sudden a beautiful statue appears, hallelujah. That's what God did for me and you. I was an ugly rock uh, that everybody looked at and said, I wouldn't want to be him. Uh, but all of a sudden, God began to remove this uh, and this uh, and this is called sanctification. And all of a sudden appeared uh, a man of almighty God. Are you with me? He says, I don't see like man sees. If a man looks on that outward appearance, the Lord said, I look on the heart. I look on the places where my seed and my calling and my purpose is. I don't look at what all they've done and what they've messed their life up. I look down inside that when they was a little innocent baby, I put a seed in them. I put a calling in them. I put a purpose. I'm still protecting and looking after that purpose. I could care less about all the other. If they'll let me activate that little seed, it'll take care of all the other stuff. Are you with me? He says in verse number 11, and Samuel said unto Jesse, are, are here all thy children? And he says, there remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, sit and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come hither, amen. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was a ruddy and with all a beautiful countenance and goodly to look at, kind of like me. And, and the Lord, I'll just pick it, I'm just teasing. And the Lord said, arise, anoint him, for this is he, amen. Then Samuel, then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon him. I'm telling you, David's seed got activated. That king that God had placed in him got activated and it began to mature, amen, that day, hallelujah. Even though that Saul was still king, I'm telling you that king was growing inside of David. Amen. It's the same way when last Sunday morning, amen, when Dylan came up, amen, and knelt at that altar, amen, and said, God, I want you to activate my calling. That's what he was doing. Let me tell you, when he was in Darlene's womb, before he went there, God put a calling in him. And last Sunday morning, that they got activated. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Man, hallelujah. Glory to God. Man, people don't know what they're missing that never activate their calling. Man, they walking around with that credit card in their wallet thinking they got something, they ain't got nothing. Huh? Because it ain't never been activated. <laughs> Help us, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. His calling got activated. Amen. It's no good until we get it activated, right? Over in Jeremiah, in the first chapter, verse four, it said, the word of the Lord came to me saying, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Before, in other words, uh, before you ever got to the womb, he knew you. Amen? And boy, all these people, it's for abortion. Better watch out. <laughs> And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Amen? Now, Jeremiah, at this point, was a young man, maybe a teenager age. Amen, he was young still. But his, 
his, his calling to be a prophet to the nations wasn't activated. It was a seed form. God put it in there. Now God's showing up before Jeremiah and calling him and he says, now I want to activate that seed that I put in you. It's time that I activate that calling, amen? Then what happened? Verse six, it says, then said I, Jeremiah said, oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak. I'm a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. In other words, I'm activating your seed today. It's going to be a difference in you, amen. Hallelujah. In other words, that card's going to be good to use. <laughs> your calling's going to be good to use, Amen. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. See, get a vision this day. See, see. I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. In other words, his calling was activated that day. And Jeremiah went and did great and mighty things. He was known as the weeping prophet. Hallelujah. He lived in a day about what we live today that nobody wanted to hear it. But he preached it anyhow, crying as he went. Amen. What a man of God. He said in Hebrews 9 and 27, listen close. And it is appointed unto man once to die. After this, the judgment. Amen. The important thing is when you die. You see, Dylan Morris died last Sunday morning. Amen. He didn't wait to the end of this life and die because it's two different judgments. It's appointed unto man wants to die. I died 30 something years ago, amen? I'm waiting on judgment, the judgment seat of Christ where I'll be rewarded for all my labors here, amen? Let me tell you, if you wait to the end of this life and die, amen? See, it's appointed, unto, it's appointment. Last Sunday morning was Dylan's appointment. Do we understand that? I had an appointment one day and I kept that appointment, I got saved. You had an appointment with God one day and he met you there and you got activated or saved, amen? However, there's been people, these pews are real old. I, we got them from a church over in Rome, Georgia. I found a, a ticket down, a little receipt thing and with a date on it in this pulpit, it was 1947. So no doubt these things are 100 years old, these pews. No doubt through the years, people has held on to the pews while preachers preached the gospel and they held on and they said, no, I'm not gonna go today. And they left and perhaps they died. At the end of their life, they died. It's appointed. If you don't die during your life here, amen, with a calling, at the end of your life, one day you're gonna die. It means separate. You separate from your body. See, die as a Christian, you separate from the world. And so they die. And then the judgment is the white throne judgment, a different judgment, my friend. You don't want to go there. Are you with me? So he says, there's a point on under man wants to die. I'm glad I've already died. And then I was born again. That's what happened last Sunday morning. Amen. Dylan died and he got born again. I'm born again. That's why we say we're born again. Amen. Are you with me? Then he said, John 12 and 24. Jesus said, verily, verily, I say unto you, listen, except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. Except it gets activated, it's all that seed will ever be, that little seed. But if you put it in the ground, things dead, put it in the ground, it gets regenerated. Man, I'm telling you, that thing will grow through. And that one little ear of corn will make several ears, uh, that little kernel of corn, rather, will make several ears of corn. Amen? And then you take those seed, those kernels, uh, and plant them, and it makes, well, if you get the good seed, <laughs> you can't do the, uh, what is it? hybrid seed that won't do that. The GMO Get that message, GMO Church, amen? Amen? It's like you can count the seeds in an apple. What is it, five? Is that right? Five seeds in an apple. 
I can count them. But you can't count the apples in that seed. Amen. I can count the people in here, but let me tell you, them callings, them seeds, and every one of us, uh, you can't count the souls that we can reach. Amen. Ain't God good. He said, except it die, it bideth alone, but if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amen. Uh, Hallelujah. Don't bury your treasures in the cemetery. Amen. Activate it and do a work for God. He said in Isaiah the sixth chapter, verse five, this is the time when Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. It's the time when he gets his calling activated in the sixth chapter. He said, then said, then said, I woe is me, for I am undone, because I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of people of unclean lips, and my eyes have seen the King of the Lord of host then flew one of the serpents unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken off the uh, taken with the tongues off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this hath touched thy lips and thine iniquities are taken away and thy sin purged in other words I'm activating your seed your calling your purpose hallelujah that's what's happening here that's what happens when a person come gets saved. God comes down and activates that seed, regenerates that calling, and it comes alive. Amen? Isn't it wonderful? Oh, I'm so glad. How do you know, Brother David, that he got his seed activated? Because verse 8 tells me. Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send and whom will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Amen, that tells me he got saved right there. He's ready to do a work for God, amen? Huh? That's what Paul said on the road to Damascus, right? What shall I do, amen? He got his calling activated, activated, amen? Isn't it wonderful? What about Moses? You, remember, you know the story of Moses. Moses was, had got, gone out of Egypt, you know, and he's a grown man. He gets out there and gets a, what is, get a wife, and then he's tending his father-in-law's sheep, and he sees the bush burning on the mountain. That was nothing uncommon. Lightning hit an old bush, and it burned for a while and go out, but it just kept burning. Kept burning. <clears throat> Curiosity got him. He drew aside and went up on top of the mountain. Y'all know the story. Amen? Went up onto the mountain and God said, take your shoes off, you're standing on holy ground. Amen? Then told him, I'm gonna send you down to deliver the people out. Uh, Moses looked, uh, looked back at the bush uh, and he said, who am I? Then I should go, who, who am I? <laughs> I mean, if God really told him, you ain't nothing without me. But God said, I'm showing up on top of this mountain to activate that calling. How do you know he had a calling? Man, my mind goes back to when Moses was born. Y'all remember when Moses was born uh, that Pharaoh wanted to kill all the, all the firstborn children, amen? Why? Because the enemy, Satan, had already whispered in his ear and said, a deliverer. God is sending a deliverer. Huh? And so he said, uh, you better kill all them babies. Uh, amen? Because, see, Satan, uh, he's dumb, but he is smart enough to know that God put a, a calling of a deliverer in somebody. Amen? Uh, amen? Uh, and it was Moses. Uh, you know the story uh, that, it, that he took, uh, told Moses' mom, put him in a basket and sent him to the river. Amen? Uh, did, and Pharaoh's uh, daughter uh, took and pulled him out of the river. Uh, amen? And sent for a Hebrew woman uh, to come tend uh, and raise that child. And you know who it was? Moses' mama. They paid, come on, Pharaoh had to pay to raise the deliverer. Ain't that like God? Woo! Man. Man. God shows up on top of the mountain years later. I'm here to activate that calling I put in you when you was in your mama's womb. I'm here to activate it. Amen? Go on down there. Amen? Moses shows up. Amen? You know the story with the he said, uh, who, what should I show him? He said, what's in your hand? He said, a rod, throw it down. Turn it into a serpent. He picked it up by the tail. He would come back to a rod, put his hand in his bosom, come out leprosy, said, and put it back down and come out clean. He said, show them the miracles down there in Egypt. Amen? So he went down there. And some of the people got the noise and around, said, uh, said well, some, some dude just showed up before Pharaoh and said, let my people go. He said, man, what a, he must have mighty chariots and horses. 
He must have all kind of weaponry and fighting men. What all does he have? He showed up with a stick and said, let my people go. Ain't that like God? I'm telling you, you'll show up with a stick too, my friend, when God activates that calling. You'll do whatever he tells you to do when he activates that calling, amen? You just want to please him. Hallelujah. God is an awesome God, isn't he? It's the same story in all these I've talked about and the Bible's full uh, and it's the same story with you and with you and with you and with you and with you. The same story. God comes down and activates our calling and we start doing a work for God. Isn't it wonderful? Wow. Man. It's like gold and diamonds, my friend. It's covered over with dirt. And God comes and removes the dirt and shows us the golden diamonds. Amen? You got to find your treasure this morning. You got to have it activated. Those coming to instruments. Remember Paul on the road to Damascus? Remember? When he was Saul? When he was Saul, he was wasting his life. Saul represents the world and he wasted his life. Persecuting the church, trying to stop the work of God, going contrary to God. He got letters to go down to Damascus to stop the little work going on down there in the church. But on the road to Damascus, let me tell you, God met him and he says, I, I put a calling in you when you are in your mama's womb and I'm here to activate that thing today. You're going the wrong way. You need to repent. That means turn around. <laughs> Amen. God met him with that bright light, you know, the bright light was to activate the calling in him and he fell to his knees, amen. After a while, after he said, uh, Jesus said, Lord, uh, he said, why, uh, Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? It's hard for thee to kick against the pricks. That's a sharp instrument. This word is sharp. People are going against the word of God and they're getting slaughtered and cut up in this world, amen. So he says, then Saul looked at me and says, what? Would you have me to do? He's feeling something different inside, Brother Lonnie. He's feeling something that he's never felt before. All of a sudden, he got churchy. All of a sudden, he got to where he wants to do work for the Lord. Amen? All of a sudden, there's a change. I don't want to stop the church, but I want to help the church. God came down and took the very man that was stopping the church and turned him around, and he wrote most of the New Testament Bible. Amen? What a difference activating your calling can make in your life. My friends, amen? What about the young man on the gatherings in Mark, the fifth chapter? Amen, everybody saw him, that he was wild. Nobody could tame him. He was that big old ugly rock that nobody wanted. But Jesus came along and he saw a beautiful statue inside. And he says, I want to activate that calling in you, son. I mean, they tried to, Bind him with chains and fetters. They couldn't. He was wild. But the Lord came along and says, all you need is for me to activate your calling. You know what his calling was? A preacher. He was living in the graveyard, the tombs. And all the time when he was in his mama's womb, God put a preacher in him. Amen. And it took Jesus to come along to activate his calling. And that preacher came alive. How do you know that? Because, you know, later on when the people came and saw him sitting clothed in his right mind, he was afraid. And Jesus is about to go away and he said, I want to go with you. He said, no, go back into the city and publish. That means preach my gospel. Amen. He went and many were saved. Ah, what a difference, my friend, of getting your calling activated. Now you can live in the tombs if you want to. And you can be a wild person and rebellious if you want to. It's all up to you. Or this morning you could come and let God activate your calling uh, and begin a good work walking with God and let, just see what God can do with your life. Amen? It's totally up to you, my friend. It's totally up to you. See, as many others in the Bible, we could go on all day long. Amen? All day long. But I'm asking you, are you ready today to activate your calling? Amen? Because let me tell you, sitting in here, every service that we have, 
since we've been Deliverance Tabernacle Ministries. There's been people come in and some will activate their calling and some don't. But every one of them had a purpose. There was preachers. There was teachers. There were singers. There were workers. And some of them came and got activated, but some of them got up and walked out and are walking out there on the street with a preacher inside of them. But it's never been activated. A teacher never been activated. A, a great gospel singer that's never been activated. That's sad, isn't it? And then they'll go and, to the end of their road and die and bury their treasure, their calling. Man. What a difference we can make if we'll activate our calling today. Amen. Now, I don't know where you stand with God today. I don't know if your calling has been activated, but this one thing I do know. You have a calling in you. God put a seed in you, a purpose in you. He did. Peter said in Acts 10, 34, I perceive that God's no respect to person. He told Jeremiah before I formed thee in the womb when you was in the what is it, Philippian tube? Philippian tube, whatever. I didn't say Philippian. <laughs> Philippian tube. When your mom and dad, right there, when, when it consummated, you became a being. And before you ever went to the womb, he said, I put a calling in you. Before you ever got then it goes down to the womb. He said, I, I put that seed in you, your purpose. So you got it this morning. It's as if you want to activate it this morning, it's up to you. Or if you want to do like so many out there, walk around with a dead seed in you. I remember when, I think it was Talia was born. There was a lady that, and we knew the people. And she'd gone full term, but the baby was dead. And she knew it was. She had to go through the whole process of birthing. And it was hard for us to rejoice in the waiting room in there and be happy because the pain that they was going through. Let me tell you, when you die and you never activated that seed, that seed remained dead in you all your life. Man, the sadness that you're going to feel when God reveals to you the purpose he had for you and you never did it. You kept saying, maybe next Sunday. Maybe tomorrow. Doesn't work that way, friends. It's when God shows up to activate you is when you got to get activated. And this, if this is your day, you need to respond today. Amen. God ain't playing. He's serious about this. He's, it's a work. Man, we're living in the last days. It's a work that needs to be done. I remember when, when back was a little trailer and they was anointing me to be pastor and my dad looked at me and Sister Connie and said, if you knew, if you knew what you were stepping into, you would ask the Lord if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Jesus did that. But nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. Hear my Lord. That's what Isaiah said. Hear my Lord. Said me. Paul said, what would you have me to do? Hear my. Is he calling you today? I'm about to ask you to stand. I want you to make up your mind right now. I'm going today to activate my calling. Today. Are you ready? On three. One, two, three. Stand all over the building and come. Obey the Lord and come. I'm going to activate my calling today. Come on. Obey the Lord this morning. Step out from where you at and come. Come on. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.